Hello, and welcome to another episode of Other Record Labels. I'm your host, Scott Orr. Thank you so much for listening in. Um, if you're following along in real time, um, then we are in the middle of this coronavirus where we're all kind of isolated at home, hopefully, which isn't a terrible thing for uh, creatives. If you are listening to this weeks and months or years into the future, then please let me know what happens. I'm really curious. Do we survive? How long does it go on? You can write to me at podcast at otherrecordlabels.com. If you're in the future, please, I want to hear from you. Um, I want to recap. I'm joking. I want to recap about um, uh, this episode we did with Painted Blonde. Painted Blonde is uh, a tape label. And what's interesting is when I listened back to that episode a couple days ago, I realized that we talked a lot about cassettes because they're this new label that started about a year ago and Jason is, uh, they're from Wisconsin and Jason is focused on cassettes primarily. And I know that a lot of our listeners are tape labels or thinking about starting tape labels. And a lot of the labels that we've interviewed are tape labels. So cassettes and tapes, even though it is still a polarizing topic, and I won't get into that, but um, tapes are something that a lot of our listeners are passionate about. I'm passionate about. Um, I, I grew up you know, from when I was born in the eighties, I, I grew up, uh, when I, the, the first format for me was cassettes. It wasn't vinyl. It wasn't quite yet CDs. It was cassettes. I remember going to the record store and they used to come in these tall plastic, uh, cases. I, I think it was so that you wouldn't steal them or so you could flip through them. I'm not quite sure. Um, but I grew up with cassettes. I love that feeling of, of holding that case, the sound that it makes. Actually, um, I think the French I think cassette is French and it comes from, um, uh, it's, it's French for small case. I think that's what I don't quote me on that. Well, you can quote me on that. I think, it, I think it's true. Anyway. Um, I want to, I want to talk a little bit about it. And after I listen to the episode and please, if you haven't already go back and listen to that episode with painted blonde. Um, but, uh, I, I, I reached out to Jason. And I said, listen, can you give me five things or a handful of things that we could share with the listeners, some tips and some things to keep in mind if you're about to make cassettes or you're considering making cassettes, or if you have made cassettes and you, and, and there's some things you want to, uh, to improve. Um, and so I, I put this little list together and Jason gave me some really helpful things and I've kind of sorted it out and I've got five things I want to share with you. Before I do that, I want to remind you to go to otherrecordlabels.com where we have a lot of helpful little things and, and more soon to be added, um, including our free guide, which you can download. When you download that free guide in the email, there's a link to our Facebook group. And I'd love it if you could join that Facebook group where there's a bunch of DIY artists and, and industry people and indie label folks. We're up to over 200 members in that Facebook group. Um, so come on over and join us there uh, if you haven't already. Okay. One of the first things that, that, that Jason mentioned that I totally forgot about, but is, is actually the most important, is to balance the audio. So we, when you're thinking about the audio now, I'm not talking about EQ balancing or, or volume balancing. I'm talking about uh, the length of each side. So the cassette is um, you order the cassette for how long you need. And so a 22 minute cassette will have 11 minutes on each side or a 30 minute cassette will have 15 minutes on each side. So you need to look at the full length of your album or EP, see how long that is. And then you're going to need to pick now allowing for space on, at the beginning and at the end. So if, if your record, let's say your record is 22 minutes and 36 seconds, then you're probably going to want to get a 24 minute tape with 12 minutes on each side that add, that allows for a little bit of buffer room, maybe even more than that. Um, and so, uh, but one of the challenges is, is that it, it's very unlikely that your album track listing will split evenly down the middle because, um, it, it, both sides of the tape are equal. Uh, that, that, that should be obvious. You can't have one side that goes a little bit longer. And so if your audio is unbalanced, then you're going to have a long, uh, empty dead space at the end of, of that tape. This is a great reminder from Jason. And there's two really cool solutions to this. If you're not lucky that your album splits down the middle and maybe you are, that's cool. And allowing a little bit of space at the end is not a huge issue, but there's two things you can do if they don't, the sides don't align 
and, th- and these are great tips from Jason. Number one is to create an alternative track list for just the cassette release. I love that idea. It's something I've done before. I've seen been done before. Not only does it kind of allow for like a little bit of a creative shakeup that's kind of fun, but it's also, um, it also gives like a kind of an exclusive feature to the cassette release that's different from the digital release. And I think some fans will find that pretty cool. Um, and so I've actually seen even big artists do that on vinyl, shift things around to help it fit a little bit better. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I, I think that's one thing you can do. And then the other thing is to, um, add a bonus track to help the side lengths. This is something I've definitely done at the end of side A or at the end of side B, you can throw on a B side or a remix or uh, an instrumental version or, or anything um, to help balance out the sides. So that's something when you're thinking about cassettes right away and you're going to be ordering blank cassettes, or if you're going to be sending the audio to a manufacturing company to put together, you need to make sure that those two audio files, side A and side B, Um, are equal in length or as close to equal as possible. Number two, start out making small runs. Um, This was another piece of advice from Painted Blonde, and I think it's really helpful because, um, you know, if you're saying, okay, we're going to make 100 cassettes, then obviously it's going to be a huge deep dive and and, uh, you might really burn yourself out. And I think what's so beautiful about cassettes is that you can really printing, we talked about printing two up on a page, <clears throat> and you can really, um, you know, do 10 or 20 units just to start out, just to see how things go. Um, that's the beauty of cassettes. And even if you order from a manufacturing place, you can go, I think you can go as low as like five or 10. You might be paying like nine or eight or nine bucks or 10 bucks per unit. But um, I did a, a release with an artist on our label and we started with 20 tapes because I wasn't sure if his audience was the tape audience, I wasn't even sure if our audience was the tape audience. So we, we started out with 20 tapes and you can always do more. Um, but, but you can make it small to begin with. The third thing is, is to try a lot yourself. Um, like T I Y, is that a term? Try it yourself. I don't know. Um, but the whole DIY culture around cassettes is really cool. And some fans really appreciate it. The more human elements that are brought into a tape, that can mean um, writing in a Sharpie on the cassette instead of using a label, um, printing the J cards at home. A lot of people print it on a home printer or they uh, will have it printed. Uh, Jason was talking about going to Kinko's and having it printed on a sheet. And then you can take an existing J card, put it over top and trace it out and cut it with scissors or with a, a special cutter. Um, I think there's something really cool about trying a lot of the elements at home, being creative. Um, and some fans and a lot of fans, I think will really appreciate it. The beautiful thing about cassettes, it is this uh, affordable, um, entry into the land of physical media. Vinyl is something in our industry that's seen as superior to cassettes. It's a, for a lot of people, it is kind of a higher tier, but with that comes the, uh, the expense, um, and the lead time of doing vinyl and, and just the overall, uh, risk that's involved for a label or an artist to do vinyl. Cassettes are, kind of a way to do something tangible and physical, um, but without that huge risk, without those high quantities and high costs involved with vinyl. Um, and so the cool thing about trying a lot of it yourself is you can really do a small quantity just to try it out to see how the response is. And it might feel good to sell out of 10 uh, limited edition cassettes. And then the next time you do 25 and 50 and a hundred. And uh, I know some of the labels we've talked to will will every um, pressing or printing of tapes they do, they do 200, they sell out and that's it. And man, that's got to be such a great feeling to to make these tapes and to sell out. Speaking of that, and, and the fourth tip is to embrace the, the tape community. This was another uh, helpful piece from Jason. And like I mentioned in the episode, I discovered... Um, his label on this, uh, subreddit called DIY labels. And I think, Oh no, no, it was the cassette subreddit. I can't remember what that's called. Um, but anyway, he had posted about his cassette release there and I subscribed to that subreddit. I saw his release. I listened to the music 
and the rest is history. Um, and, and but there is something so important about the community, and and I know from our our, our labels that we've um, interviewed, there is a great community on Twitter and on Instagram and on on the subreddits and 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 here with the the guests that we've had on the show, and so embrace that community. In a couple of ways, you can reach out to them and ask them questions. I'm sure they'd be kind enough to get back to you. Um, and and the other thing is to support them. It's to to buy tapes from them so that you can support the industry and to get involved in the community, but also to see how they do things. I remember uh, a couple of years ago, I was had the idea to um, manufacture guitar pedals. I had a friend who could make guitar pedals and we thought about going down this road of, of, we didn't end up doing it, thank goodness, but I was in this research phase and I bought two guitar pedals from independent manufacturers in, in America. And um, I did it so that I could see how they packaged the guitar pedal, um, what the shipping padding looked like, what were the freebies that were um, included the instruction manual, that kind of stuff. Um, and that was really enlightening. And I think that you can do something similar. You could buy a couple tapes from different type of labels, labels that get them manufactured out of house or labels that will do them in house to see how people do things. Um, and, and, you know, shipping tapes is pretty cheap. So you could buy a handful of tapes from different labels to see how they do it. And you get some great ideas at the same time. Um, you get some great tapes and you support that community. The final, the final tip is to go professional. And, and this is something different. I mean, this is a, a, a different option. And, and I, when I was getting started in tapes and I, I've done a few tape releases, I love to do more. Um, I started out by doing it myself, by printing it at the UPS store, tracing the J card, cutting it out, scoring it. I bought this like Martha Stewart scoring thing from Michaels. And, I eventually found the process to be very arduous to have to set up all of the stuff to build it. I'm not as crafty and patient as some people. Uh, and I just wasn't really even pleased with the final product. I also realized, and, and I, you know, that the cost breakdown from all the, the headaches and stress and everything to getting it manufactured professionally, wasn't it a huge increase? I mean, some people might differ, but, um, for me, it, it, when I'm doing such low quantities, I just, I thought that the, the stress wasn't worth it. Um, and so I ended up, uh, paying manufacturing to do it. And there's two, two companies that come to mind. I'm not endorsing them in any way, but I know that a lot of our listeners and, uh, the labels we interview have used these, uh, these manufacturing companies. There's one in Canada called duplication.ca. I've used them and I, I really like them. They have this cool online quote generator. So you can add these different features and stuff and see how that affects the price. And then the other company is national audio company, which are iconic in this space. And I know a lot of our labels, um, have used this, uh, company before. And, uh, and so those are two companies that you could research on your own. And, and, and again, this, this podcast, this episode here is not comprehensive when it comes to tapes. There are so many of our labels that have, uh, way more experience. And, and I suggest you, you reach out to them and we have a lot of cool, uh, tape labels that are being interviewed for future episodes. Um, and, uh, and so I think you'll find that helpful for tapes, but with manufacturing, I think, um, it is, a, it is an option and it's really interesting that you can go down really low in quantities, still make a little bit of a profit. Um, the higher you go in quantities, the, the, the greater the profit because the, the cost comes down a little bit. Um, but I've done 20 and 25 and it's really nice to sell out break even and say, Hey, that was really fun and, and keep a few for yourself. Um, if you haven't already, go back and listen to that Painted Blonde episode. I love that label, and I love all of our tape labels. Um, and, and I know that tapes aren't for everyone. It is a polarizing topic for whatever reason. But I love it, and I love that there are fans out there um, who want it to support uh, tape labels. And, and I'm not going to judge or criticize um, however people want to support artists and, and labels. If if they want to buy USB sticks or mini discs from labels, I don't care. It's all support and it's all great. Um, and tapes are such a cool thing. And I know there's a passionate group for people um, of people who are, who are interested in it. And um, if you have any questions, I'm sure you can reach out to a lot of our tape labels. They would probably be glad to help you. Or you can email me at podcast at other record labels. 
www.thepodcastnetwork.com. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, more great uh, labels to be featured in the future. And uh, I hope you're hanging in there. <laughs>